Also, when I was visiting Sony in Los Angeles, I had the great pleasure of playing Naughty Dog's newest, The Last of Us. Um, I'm actually quite surprised that we got to have hands on time with this game because it's a game that, even since I saw it back at E3, seems to be an, a, a tough one to try to excerpt and get a sense of what the overall experience is. Uh, Naughty Dog has always been known for strong narrative since they started the Uncharted series, but that seems even more so in something like Last of Us, which is so much about attachment to the characters and sort of the cost of the violence that's happening in this world around them. Um, having said that, it was one hell of an experience uh, playing about the 40 minutes that they offered us of Last of Us. It was not the very beginning of the game, but it was towards the beginning of the game, and it did introduce the oft-mentioned, but not before seen, infected. Uh, I know a lot of people kind of see them as zombies. They seem to have gone to quite a length to give these once humans a sense that is distinct from the zombies that we're seeing running around in so many, so many games these days. To your left. But I would say the overall effect is, this is one of the most harrowing games that I've played. I only played 40 minutes of it. Um, I, I had to stop a little bit in the middle to conduct an interview, and I was actually grateful because my heart was starting to pound from just this sense of anxiety. It's also just the mood that permeates the game. Uh, it's just there, there, there's a dread. There's a tiny bit of music at the beginning that then gives out, and you just hear all the natural or in human sounds that are coming from around you and you become so focused on all of them because anything that's different could mean potential death for you. Um, so let's talk about the infected very quickly. Uh, they did show us three different types, but there are only two that were in uh, this playable section of the game. One are called the runners, and these are the ones who've been infected and are rather fresh for lack of a better word. Uh, they don't have very good eyesight, but they still have sort of human power. They can run very fast and they'll come at you. At the same time, they are more vulnerable and you can punch them, you can bash their head in with a two by four. The other type of infected they showed, they're calling clickers. Um, these are maybe a year after the infection. Their head is no longer recognizably human. It's almost something Cronenbergian in, in the way that kind of has torn itself open. Anyway, they're completely blind and their ability to get around and interact with the environment is by making a clicking sound. And like a bat, how it kind of bounces off, that Doppler effect is where they can detect objects and of course, motion, like you. <laughs> they are a one hit kill, which I know is kind of controversial for some of my colleagues and it does create a huge challenge but it also creates so much tension because you can only take them down with a gun, which will alert any other enemies in the area, or if you have enough equipment to build a shim, sneak up behind them and kind of gun them in the head. Um, like, like I said, Harrowing is really the feeling I had. I, won't, I don't want to call the game survival horror. I want to call it desperate horror. Uh, every time I saw a shiny object, I'm grabbing it, trying to figure out what you can build to give yourself a slight edge. Um, yes, you are moving in a stealthy way throughout a lot of the game, but it moves very quickly. And that survival horror aspect where you are crafting things is very quick. The menu is elegantly laid out where with only a, probably about a five second glance, you can figure out what you can build and what you need more equipment to, to be able to put together. Really one of the biggest problems I've had with survival horror is the sense that the menu system just stops the game dead in its tracks. That is definitely not the case here. Um, the game is good looking, though it clearly is gonna need to go through a few more graphical upgrades that you know they really were just showing what the gameplay was like having said that it's a very effective and highly evocative world it's uh, the, the the downtown section of Boston where already uh, the foliage has grown into the buildings and a lot of the buildings are now tilting on their side which allows for some very in interesting traversals of levels um, all in all it's a very unique game and one that in some ways I would like to say I cannot wait to play that the, the, the issue that is still there with me with this game is how long I could be able to play it in one sitting. There is something so grim, so moody, but I mean, that's why it's so effective. Having said that, hanging out in that world for an extended period of time 
might prove very, very challenging, but it was only to their credit that they could be constructing something that really almost seems like an evolution out of the wonder, at least for me, that was the Uncharted series. All right, so that's The Last of Us. Please check out the interview that I did with Naughty Dog's uh, Neil Druckmann. Uh, it's, it's up there on the site. And check out some of the stuff for God of War Ascension and some of the other games here. Remember, youtube.com slash red3games. Hit the subscribe button. You know, it, it, it's, it's not like you're going to end the world in a horrible disaster if you do it. <laughs>